morning, church. Pastor asked me to open up this morning, and uh, I was glad to oblige. Um, let me read you a scripture in uh, Titus this morning. Chapter 2, verse 11 to 13. And here it goes in my Bible. For the grace of God has been revealed bringing salvation to all of us. And we are instructed to turn from Godless living, sinful pleasures. We should live in this evil world, and we know how evil it is, with self-control, right conduct, and devotion to God. Yes. Amen to this. Amen. We know that this world is coming apart from left to right, up and down, no matter what they're trying to do or how many conferences they're going to, it's just not working anymore. And the only solution is to turn our mind to Jesus. He's our only Savior, our only King, and the only person that we should be listening to or try to imitate on how he was living when he was here on earth. Come on, you're preaching good. Thank you, brother. All right, let's have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you again for this beautiful day that you give us. We thank you, Father, for us being here and listening to what you have to say to us through our pastor or through our other brothers and sisters that you will bring forth and talk to us. We thank you, Father, for all the blessing that you've been bestowing on us, and you never stop taking care of us day in, day out. And we love it. And we will praise your name forever and ever. And thank you, Lord God, again, for everything that you've done for us. Praise you in Jesus' name. Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Let's enjoy the service, people. Yes. <laughs> Together again.
this platform that are powerful worshipers. I wish we had more mics. I wish we had more stands. But we're just going to, you know, just, just, just be in the spirit. Because you never know what pastor's going to direct there at some point, And uh, just be ready. I'll say that.
Oh! 
never fought things that you didn't need to fight, you could have just handed it over early on. Praise the Lord. He'll take it. He'll take it. He'll take it. And he will work it for his good. Amen. Praise the
don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop.
with his father, and he knew his God. And it says, they that know their God will do great exploits. Doesn't talk about your race, your color, your gender, your age. It just says, if you know your God, you can do great exploits. And David lived in the presence of the Lord. Because we know that from the Psalms and how he read all those hundreds of Psalms. And he did a lot of that when he was just sitting in a field watching sheep. And you say, wow, that's such a mediocre job. But you know, God used him in that place because he knew how to get in the presence of the Lord. And it says, the presence of the Lord, there was power to heal them all. But all didn't get When um, David ran to that giant, we've been singing about giants this morning. You all have a giant. It might be a giant of this, it might be a giant of that. Whatever is bothering you, whatever is attacking you, whatever is just that in your life, it's a giant. And giants are never good things in the Bible. You know, when the ten spies went to seek out the land, it says they were giants in their eyes. And they were bad guys. So it's not a good thing. When David ran toward that Philistine that had been cursing God for 40 days, it was not a good thing. That giant had paralyzed a whole army of powerful men. But it took one man just to live in the presence of God and said, this giant is coming down. Sophie, I don't know if you can find the scripture. Maybe you can just ask Siri on your phone real quick or something. But it says, who is this uncircumcised Philistine that you would defy the armies of the living God? I think it's in Chronicles, but I'm not sure. First Samuel 7, I think Pastor said. 17. And I want you to look at that scripture. And I don't want you just to look at that scripture, but I want that scripture to come in you and be part of your confession. Right at the bottom it says, For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the army of the living God? You know, whatever is attacking you, we hear a lot about cancer today. It's the number one killer. So let's talk about that. Because first of all, it's not your job to heal cancer. It's your job to believe God that he's done it. That's all you have to do. You cannot heal cancer in your body. It's your job to believe that that giant's head was already cut off at the cross. And you have to talk to those things and say, who is this uncircumcised Philistine of cancer? Who is this uncircumcised Philistine of Philistine of, of lack or whatever is coming against you. And you know, David was bold. I was pretty quiet about it at the same time. And he said, well, what's going to be done for the man who does this? You know, sometimes you want to know what's in it. Well, I'll tell you what's in it. Victory's in it for you. Living in peace, living in divine health, living in divine prosperity, living in divine everything. That's what's in it for you. Is it worth it? Yeah. Is it worth it for you? Or do you just say, well, I, really, I don't know I can do this giant. I, just, I think I'll just put up with this today. Just don't know if I can handle giants today. Well, you know, you, you can handle them because the greater one lives inside of you. But sometimes we get a little, we just put up with things. Do you ever find you just put up with things? The other last week I was attacked with some kind of virus. I don't know what it was, but but ding dong, it took me till afternoon to realize what am I doing laying in this bed? And I haven't even spoken to this thing that's attacking me. I haven't even called in the name of the Lord. All I've been saying is, oh my goodness sake, oh, I mean, it was coming out every end you can think about. And all I was saying, I'm so sick, and I kept getting sicker and sicker and sicker. Yeah. Now you guys don't do that because you're way up there. <laughs> but I do that stuff. And every once in a while, I need a spiritual kick in the face. And it's like God saying, hello, I'm here. You got your mouth. You might not have the sword in your hand like David did, but I, in Ephesians chapter 5 or 6, it says, 
as you go forward with the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, I put a sword in your mouth, and you got to speak to those things. So finally, about 2 o'clock in the afternoon, Sam, I said, what am I doing in this bed? I remember Pastor Mark saying, heal people, don't lay in bed. And I was like, that's right. Heal people, don't lay in bed. I am the healed of the Lord, and I say so. And I got up. Now, I'd like to tell you that I felt 100% just like that, but I didn't. It took about four days to feel 100%, but I still got up. You know, I don't know what David felt like running towards that giant, but I'm sure he wasn't feeling goosebumps and, and you know, butterflies. I'm sure the spirit of fear was attacking him full blast when he was running to that giant, but he did it afraid. And you got to attack your giants afraid. Joyce Meyer has an awesome little book, and it's called Do It Afraid. If you don't ever listen to her, I suggest you should listen to her, because she'll give you some Holy Ghost backbone to attack your giants with her teachings. But you have the victory this morning. You have the victory. And sometimes you just need to say, who is this uncircumcised Philistine that's defying me? I am the living army of the living God. I'm alive, and my God's alive. And that's me. And you just got to run towards that giant with your sword in your mouth and start cutting down those things. Amen? Because we have the victory. We have the victory. You have it now. You already got it. Andrew Walmack has an awesome teaching. I'm not getting any points for this. I wish I'd get money for this, but I don't. But he's got an awesome teaching called You Already Got It. I'm telling you, if you watch this stuff and you put it in you, it'll turn things around in your life. Amen. Amen? Because what you feed the most is what's going to work in you.
you have a writing out a check today, you can write that out to the Faith Church. I don't know if that air conditioner is working at all today or not. It doesn't feel like it is. Yeah, it is. I know it's moving, but it doesn't feel cool in here, though. No, it just feels clammy and whatever it's out there. Anyway, the Bible says God loves a cheerful giver over in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and around verse 6 or 7. God loves a cheerful, cheerful giver. Okay? And so we, we love to give. I love to give. I, I love to be a blessing to the kingdom of God. I realize that I'm sowing seed and that every seed that I sow will produce harvest. Amen. Amen. And so if I sow sparingly, I still will have a harvest. <coughs> if I sow bountifully, I still have a harvest. Mm -hmm. And so it says that God gives seed to the sower, and once we sow our seed, then it becomes bread to the eater. In other words, He provides abundantly. We have bills. How many have bills to pay? <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, you can take your you can take your seed and pay your bills, or you can take your seed and sow it into God. Mm -hmm. And God said, I'll provide abundantly above all that you have to pay. So let's say this again. Heavenly Father, I come to the joy. I come to the privilege to sow into the kingdom of God. Every penny will produce for God and for me. The gospel will be preached. Lives will be changed. And Satan will be stopped. It will produce for me good measure. Press down, shake it together, and running over. Will God give back to me through the hands of men so that I can give again? In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. So we want to remind you we did get another uh, order of uh, from, uh, grace uh, or disgrace. It's a book that uh, by Pastor Hooper. He's a good friend of ours. Been to the church here many times. Awesome, awesome book. And we would encourage you to, if you can, that they sell, he sells them for $15. And, but we want to put it into people's hands. I mean, if you cannot afford it, I'll give it to you. Okay, just that simple. We want to get these things into your hands. Um, if, if you can't afford it, we just ask $10. That just helps cover a little bit of the cost. But it's a, it is a really, really a powerful, powerful book that will help us. We did some teaching on understanding grace and, and what grace is about, and it'll help you along those lines. Amen? Amen. Anybody read this book yet? Yes. Is it any good? Yes. 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 I thought I heard something. <laughs>
part of the, the gospel, the good news is, is the gospel. We talk about faith, we talk about love, we talk about uh, prosperity, but you know what? We still need to talk about holiness. Amen. And so holiness uh, is, uh, uh, you're gonna, wherever your background is, is, is kind of the picture you have of holiness, okay? And so when it, I came out of a Presbyterian uh, background, and so I had little or no no uh, uh, guidelines for holiness because that was that was something that was never mentioned uh, particularly. It wasn't until I got into uh, Pentecost and Pentecostal church I started going to a, uh, a type of a, of a holiness church uh, many years ago, and uh, I began to to hear a little bit more about it and began to experience what they understood of what holiness was. And so all of us, if we were to ask you what holiness is, each of us might have a little bit different idea. And oftentimes it just comes from, you know, where we've been and who we've hung around and who we've talked to. But the best way to find out what holiness is, find out what the Bible says about it. Because yeah. in the end, that, that's what really matters, isn't it? And yeah. you know, you, you, can, you can talk about love and, and everything, but until you find out what the Bible says about love, mm-hmm. it's just, you know, people's opinion. You, you know, I could give you my opinion on some things, but... I think in the end, the, the, the Bible is the best, it's not even an opinion, it's just this sure. is the way that it is. And uh, we all have opinions about things, I know I do, and we can become very opinionated about some things. And, and I was just uh, listening to uh, somebody here, they got, they got quite opinionated on, uh, on uh, politics, you know, and, and, uh, and perhaps rightfully so, and because they, they just were, were really talking about it. And, uh, uh, it's it's a, it's a, because they see things and they, they want to express it. But with, when it comes to the holiness, it's something that is that affects all of us, okay? And in your mind and, and in our, my mind, uh, we have some ideas what we think it is. But it's until you actually get into the Word of God and you find out what the Word of God actually says about it. And sometimes it can be a real eye-opener, amen? Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. And so uh, uh, it says, uh, uh, verse 12, it says, Wherefore, lift up the hands which hang down and the people's knees. Make straight paths for your feet. Let that which is lame be turned out of the way, but rather, rather let it be healed. Follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. And so when you take it at its face value, it simply just tells us this. It says, without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. Is that what it says? Says. That's exactly what it says. Okay? But do you realize that the Bible was not written in English? It was written in this particular place. It was written in Greek. Okay? And so when you read it in the Greek, it has a little bit different connotation. Okay? And so the word, uh, word, word see, it says, without going to no man shall see the Lord, it is the word perceive. Perceive. Without holiness, you will not be able to perceive and see what God is doing. Oh. 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 Well, that just upset my boat. Well, it upset my boat too. But I can't change the word of God. You can't change these things. And so what, what we need to find out is, well, what does God say about these things? Because hmm. that's what really, really matters. And so he's telling us something. He's telling us, make straight paths for your feet. Okay? He has told me that, Gary, make straight paths for your feet. And I said, well, what do you mean? He said, the, uh, make straight paths for your feet. He says, Gary, you got out of your love walk. Hmm. Ooh. Oh, I wonder gosh. why everything was going bad. Everything was just, wow, was it? having a rough, rough time, and, and I'm, I'm just, I'm up four in the morning, complaining to God, again, been doing that for a couple of years, complaining at four in the morning, and I said to the Lord, finally I said this to the Lord, okay, I said, Lord, what's wrong with me? I know you've never done that. I said, Lord, what's wrong with me, because I could find, you know, you can find out what's wrong with everybody else. Yeah. But, man, but you say, Lord, what's wrong with me? me yeah. And he told me so plain. He wasn't mean. He wasn't hard or hard. He said, Gary, you got out of your love walk. Mm. And it only took me about 10 seconds to get out of my love walk. As far as I know, that was 21, 22 years ago. 
I don't believe I've, I've ever gotten out of my love walk since then. Amen. I guess that I don't think that air conditioner is working at all. It just started. It's yeah. I can feel the cool air. Can you? Okay. And so he said, he said, you know, make straight paths for your feet, lest not which is going to be turned out of the way. Okay? I remember my son Greg had actually preached about this some years ago, and, and uh, he had uh, taken his son uh, and his family, they had gone, his son uh, Jonathan was little, and uh, I don't know, maybe he's three or four years old, five years old maybe, and they had gone to the Canada Day celebrations to the fireworks over at Long Labiche, and and Jonathan had never seen fireworks before in his life, and so they got all the lawn chairs out and whatever, and the kids were laying on a, on a blanket looking up, and, and the first one goes up, and it just goes kaboom! You know, it's all these brilliant colors, and Jonathan's eyes get so big, and he turns to his dad and says, Daddy, that's a miracle! <laughs> <laughs> See what the, he saw, you know, with everybody else, there's just fireworks. Mm -hmm. But to him, he, he saw something different. Mm -hmm. He saw something different. Jesus saw things mm -hmm. so different than the religious people saw yes, things. He does. Oh, yeah. And that, that's oh, where we great. need to, to go with these things. It's where we need to, remember it says in, in, in verse John of 1, 7, it says, but walk in the light as he is in the light, mm. okay? And so when they brought to the, to the, uh, this woman caught in, in adultery, which was sin, okay? Mm. They caught her in the very act and brought her to Jesus and threw her at the feet and said, well, the word says that she should be stoned. So what do you say? Did you notice, wonder where the guy was? I did, yeah. 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 He did. Mm. Yeah. Where, where was the guy? Funny, they, they didn't bring him, mm. okay? Mm. But they brought her, threw her down, and there were stones there. And, she, and they said, what, 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 would you, what do you say? You know, mm. are, are you going to violate the law of Moses? Because Moses said that you catch it by you stone them, okay? And Jesus, it says Jesus wrote in the dirt. There's some people that say they, they can tell you what he wrote. I don't know, maybe they can. I don't know. <laughs> He wrote something, and finally he just stood up and said, uh, uh, he that is without sin, let cast the first stone, and it says, well, for a few moments, they just go with it, and then finally it says, from the eldest to the youngest, they put their stones on their left, mm. okay? And then he said to the woman, woman, where are thine accusers? And she said, well, Lord, Lord there are none. And he said, neither do I accuse thee. But notice the next part. Sometimes people, when they go, they say, leave it out. He said, yes. go and sin no more. Sin no more. Amen. Hallelujah. Mm. He, he wasn't saying that, that uh, you know, uh, he was just simply saying, you need to stop what you're doing. Okay? Fine. Because sin, sin is still sin. Okay? Old Testament, New Testament is not, not is no different. Sin is still sin. Wrong is still wrong. Mm. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And go with me to... Uh, I was just writing some things down really quick uh, before the service here, so while we were praying the word of Mark, 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 Mark chapter 7. Mark chapter 7. <coughs> Verse 1. Then came uh, together unto him the Pharisees and certain of the scribes which came from Jerusalem. And when they saw some of his disciples eat bread with defiled, that is to say with unwashed hands, they found fault. Mm -hmm. okay? For the Pharisees and all the Jews, ex except they wash their hands often, eat not, holding the traditions of the elders. And so they came and they saw that Jesus was in the field, the disciples were taking grain and they would rub it in their hands and then they would just simply eat the grain. And they did they didn't had washed their hands and so they the, the religious leaders found fault with Jesus and his disciples. Okay? And so uh, uh, they came and, and they they confronted Jesus 
Verse 3, for the Pharisees and all the Jews except they wash their hands ought to eat not holding the other traditions of the elders. For when they come from the market except they wash, they eat not. And many other things that there be which they have received to hold as the washing of cups and pots, brazen vessels, and of tables. So they're talking about all the things that they had to do before they could eat. You know, it's, it's a good idea to wash your hands. Yes. It is a good idea mm. to wash your hands. It's a good idea to wash your plates. Okay? Not, and it's not, washing is not letting the dog lick it clean. Okay? <laughs> and just putting it back on the table. That's, that's probably not a good idea either. Okay? But they had all these traditions that over time, everybody say over time. Over time. Over time, over time these traditions became to, to them became almost like commandments. That's how they saw it. And so Jesus is going to come in and he is going to rock their, their theological boat, their doctrinal boat, and he's going to rock it really, really bad. Mm -hmm. And uh, it says that when they came from the market, except they washed, they eat. Now, they would eat. Okay? And many other things there be which they have received to hold as the washing of cups and, the receive, uh, and have received to hold as washing of cups and pots, brazen vessels and a table. And the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, why walk not thy disciples according to the traditions of the elders, but they eat bread with unwashed hands? Then he answered and said unto them, Well, hath Isaiah prophesied of you, you hypocrites? For it is written, This people honors me with their lips, and their heart is far from me. How be it in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men? So you can go to church all of your life thinking you're worshiping God, and you're not worshiping God. Well, I sing all the songs. I say all the confessions. Those things don't mean diddly squat. Now, you know what diddly squat means. Okay? That's an Oklahoma colloquial expression. Okay? It doesn't mean anything. We've got, what we've discovered with God, and we're going to keep discovering it, God is a heart God. Mm. Yes. God watches and looks at our heart. Yes. See, where is my heart at? And so he said, this people honors me with their lips. Their lips are saying the right words. Mm -hmm. You ever hear somebody, I mean, they're saying the right words, but it sounds so hollow sometimes. Mm -hmm. It sounds so empty. I mean, they're speaking, you know, just powerful words, but it, it's just like, it's just, it, to me sometimes it sounds so hollow. Mm -hmm. It says, well, it's the right thing to say. Mm -hmm. Well, that be the, the right thing to say, but if it's not a, a core belief mm -hmm. in your heart, Hallelujah. How be it? They, they do it. Uh, they, they worship me, teaching for doctrines and commandments. They, they do it in vain. Uh, for laying aside the commandments of God, you hold the traditions of men as washing of pots and cups and many other like things. See, they had all these things. Oh, well, God rejects the commandments of God that you may keep your own traditions. For Moses said, I don't know that father must. And so he's telling them that they simply. Uh, they, they replaced a commandment of God by the traditions, and that could be easily done. And often we don't even realize that we've done it. See, they, they said that, well, you know, to get more money into the offering plates, uh, you know, children aren't supposed to take care of their family. That was the re that was God's retirement plan for, for the early, ch early church. It was for in Jesus' day and, and in Moses' day. So if you had lots of children when you got older and you weren't able to make a living, your children would take care of you. Okay? Today we, we don't have to, people don't have to do that. They put people in the nursing homes and try to get rid of But they said, well, we'll make an exception, you know, that you, you don't have to take care of, but then give a big offering to the into the synagogue. And so uh, they they were Jesus called them on that and told them that they were breaking the commandments to keep a tradition. Okay? Hallelujah. In verse 13, it says, They make the word of God of non effect through your traditions. So that's possible. That our traditions can take us into a place that causes us to make the word of God of non effect. I don't want to do that in my life. I'm sure I have in the past. But, uh, and if I'm doing it today, I want to be certain that I find out about it so that I don't make the word of God of non effect. Now go with me to Matthew chapter 15. Again, we hear that Jesus talks about it in chapter verse 1. Oh. 
He reads again about the tradition. He talks about them eating with unwashed hands. Okay? And he goes back to the same thing, just to repeat. And verse 9, start down to verse 10. Now here he adds, a, uh, Matthew adds a little bit more. And he called the multitude and said unto them, Hear and understand, not that which goeth into the mouth defiles a man, but that which comes out of the mouth, this defiles a man. You see, the, the Jews had made that everything, the holiness was always outward. It was everything outward. Jesus is trying to teach us holiness is really inward. It's what's on the inside that makes a person holy. It's not what, what the, the scribes and the Pharisees, you know, the Jews, they had these little scripture boxes. And they had all these little tassels and everything that they wore in thinking that that was going to cause them to be, be holy. And Jesus is bringing in something he said is it's not what the, uh, goes, goes into a person, what comes out yes. of the person. Amen. That what is, makes it holy, okay? or unholy. He says, not that which goes in the mouth defiles man, but that which comes out of the mouth, that this defiles a man. Okay? Mm -hmm. And then the disciples that, that, that came to him, he said, no, it's not, not the Pharisees, they were offended at these things. You know, there's times that, that Jesus, sometimes the word of God will offend people. Well, I don't like what you're teaching. You know? I, I can't. I, I, to be honest with you, can I be honest with you? Yes. yes. Surely I could be frank with you. Yes. You be surely, I'll be frank. <laughs> this is about Jeffrey's this morning. Oh, my God. Oh, oh, my God. He said, oh, this is what I want to teach. Hmm. I said, Lord, I got all this other stuff. <laughs> <laughs> they might not like it. They might not you like see, it. See, that could be my tradition. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But see, when, when I, I have to, you know, I have to obey God. Yes, amen. Everything, everything, doesn't, there is nothing that, that, that I teach that isn't controversial to somebody. Yeah. Somewhere. Yeah. Somewhere. Somewhere in there. If it's water baptism, <laughs> it could be communion. It could be faith, it could be love. Somebody's going to find fault <laughs> with it. Okay? No matter what. But again, you know, it, Jesus offended people. Mm -hmm. okay? You know, and you know, there's times that you know, I probably got offended too. But you know what I had to do? I had to I had to to, to get my, my big boy pants on and <laughs> suck it up. So you know? I had to change, you know, over the I had to change yeah. what what I had been taught. Okay? Mm. And, and what I had been taught was sometimes it was just what man thought, wasn't what God thought. And so in, in, in when you begin to follow the Lord, uh, he, he gave him permission to, to correct us, amen? Yeah. 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 Hallelujah. Then verse 12, then came, then came his disciples and said unto him, Knowest thou not that the Pharisees, they were offended after they heard these sayings. You know, they were trying so hard to be holy. And they weren't. Okay? <clears throat> he says, Every plant which my heavenly Father hath not planted shall be rooted up. Let them alone, they be blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, they shall both fall in the ditch. Right. Hallelujah. Well, we're going okay? And then, verse 15, Then Peter and said unto him, Declare unto us this parable. And Jesus said, Are you also without understanding? Do you not understand that which enters into the mouth goes into the belly and is cast out into the dry? In other words, you know, you you, you go into the bathroom. Okay? Mm -hmm. What goes in, the excess goes out. Okay? Yeah. But those things which proceed out of the mouth come from the heart, and that is what defiles. Okay? Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. For out of the heart proceeds evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, blasphemy. These are the things which defile a man, but to eat with unwashed hands defiles not a man. So it's not, it's, Jesus is always looking on the inside. He's looking at the, on the inside of us. Now, I, I grew up, uh, not grew up, but, but began to, to feed because the Lord told me to, 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 to listen to the teachings of Kenneth Hagin. He told me that. Because I was up and down. I was, I was a spiritual mess. 
because yeah, I, I was a voracious reader, and everything I read, I believed. And uh, there was a lot of ungodly theologians out there who didn't believe the Bible was true, and they would they would make fun. And, and so I was up, I was down, but finally the Lord, in his mercy, said, Gary, stop reading all these things. I want you to listen to Kenneth Hagin, uh, 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 Fred Price, uh, Lester Summerall, John Osteen, and there was another one. Uh, Normal haze. He said, that's what I want you to listen to for right now. Okay? And I did that. From, and that, man, it just settled me right out. In time, it just settled me right out. Why? Because you, you have the voice of stability. Yeah. You see, the Bible says that Jesus taught as one with authority. When the scribes taught, they said, well, you know, Rabbi, so and so, he, he says this and so, and Rabbi over here, he says that. And we're not exactly certain, but when did all we get to have all get locked out? No, when Jesus taught with authority, he said, this is how it is. Mm-hmm. And so sitting under Brother Hayden, uh, he had some things. Now, he, he was back in the 30s and the 40s, which was the Depression, so happening. And he wore, when he went to church, he wore a suit and tie mm-hmm. when he went to, to church, Sunday morning, Sunday night. This was long before air conditioning. And whenever other service they had, they, they had, he wore a suit. He said, but even if he was working around the house and doing carpentry work and fixing things up, he would wear his jeans and grubbies. But he said, if I had to go to the hardware store to get something, I'd go put my suit and tie back on, and I'd go, I never went to town, let anybody see me without my suit and tie. All the right. And so, you know, he always said, you want to, you know, you always try to look your best. We're living in a day and an age where, it, you know, a lot of things have changed. Mm-hmm. A lot of things have changed. And, and, you know, I still kind of cling to, to Sunday morning a little bit, but I remember the first time I wore jeans to church to speak in. Oh, I couldn't find anything else, you know. And I understood, you know, you, know, you want to wear your best, and the best I could find at that point, everything I either was dirty or dry cleaning or whatever, it was this pair of jeans. And oh, Lord, oh, God. I'm going to lose my salvation. <laughs> God, i got to go to church. You know, to my utter amazement, to my utter amazement, the anointing showed up. Yes. Yes. God was not upset with me and Jesus. He really came back. I mean, I, you know, I still do, do my best to, 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 to you know, dress up, and, and uh, even times I'll, I'll ask, oh, is this not particular I, I should wear? Most times you just, just wear what you want. And sometimes my mom says, uh, why don't you put your black shirt on? I said, well, I'll think about it. I don't know. Just, you know black shirt. <laughs> she likes black shirt. <laughs> and so I, I, I try to dress for being comfortable. I don't know about you. I, I like to be comfortable. Yes. If I'm not comfortable, then. But uh, uh, we're living in a, in a, a day and age that, that society is changing, and, and people change along with us. How they dressed, you know, in, in Jesus' day is, is, is how you know, people don't really dress the same way anymore. We, we've changed, and how are they going to dress? If the Lord should tear a hundred years from what what's it going to look like then? Mm-hmm. I, I don't know. But, you know, we, we kind of just, we, we, people change, and, but God never changes. Mm-hmm. And God never changes. That's the wonderful thing. Right? Mm-hmm. The world changes, styles change, you know, mm-hmm. and different things. And I'm glad we're not in horse and buggy days. Yes. Okay? yes. Mm-hmm. That is, most of you wouldn't be here today. <laughs> <laughs> I still be on my way to, to church here. I need to get here. <laughs> Hallelujah. But I found, but I found that that the North Indian was still there. And that, that helped me, and, and so I, I, I don't mind, you know, I, I, I try to find clean jeans, you know, fresh jeans, fresh if I'm going to do that. Uh, I don't know how they did it back in, in the Brother Higgins day, they had no air conditioning yet, they, they preach in suits and everything, I don't know how in the world they ever managed to do that. Hallelujah. Psalms 23, let's go over there, not Psalm 23, uh, Matthew 23. Matthew 23, how are we doing? Thank you for that. Amen. <laughs> okay, let's go. Let's start. Oh, 
Okay, wow. This is a, a chapter with a lot of woes in it. Woe, and that woe is not good. Okay? Uh, verse 14, uh, uh, verse 13, Matthew 20, 13. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you shut up the kingdom of heaven against men, for neither do you go in yourself, neither them uh, that, that were entering in go in either. Okay? And so they had the key of knowledge, other scriptures said. You have the key of knowledge, and you didn't enter in, and you won't let anybody else enter in. You've got the word, and it, it can help people, and set people free, but you don't use it. And you're hitting everybody else that wants to get in. Okay? Uh, verse 14, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. <coughs> for you devour widows' houses, and for a pretense make long prayers, and you sh that you should receive the greater damnation. Verse 15, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. For you come past sea and land to make one proselyte, and then you and then he has made, you make him twofold more of the child of hell than yourselves. So, He's, they're just talking about, you know, the, the, how, the, the scribes and Pharisees did not see this this way. They thought they, they actually thought they were doing the will and the work of God. Jesus comes in and he sees things. Heaven sees things a little different than we do sometimes. We have to understand that. Okay? What do I do? I have to line myself up with how heaven sees things, how God sees things. Okay? So I can walk with God. If I don't, if I don't walk with God, I'm in trouble. Now look at verse 16. Woe unto you God, blind guides, which say, if you swear by the temple, it is nothing, but whosoever shall swear by the gold of the temple, he is a debtor. You fools and blind, for whether is greater the gold or the temple that sanctifies the gold. <coughs> and whosoever shall swear by the altar, it is nothing, but whosoever sweareth by the gift that is on he shall be guilty. You fools and blind, for whether it is greater the gift or the altar that has sacrificed the gift. Whosoever shall swear by the altar sweareth by it, and all things thereon. But whosoever sweareth by the temple sweareth by it, and by him that dwelleth therein. So what does that mean? You got time for a story. Absolutely. Sometimes the stories take, help us explain it to you today. Amen. Now, in some groups, some, some, some places, women are not permitted to teach or, or to speak. Is that on? Is that yes. A, yes. That's that, 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 you know, also I do not permit a woman to teach or to speak. Right? And, uh, and so uh, they forbid a, person, a woman to speak or teach. But, if we were to go down into the basement, she's down there teaching the children. Well, that's okay, because that's a basement. And in some denominations, they, they don't always have a lot of able men capable of going overseas on missions, and so they send the women over there and the women start preaching, and they get churches established, and they get them up and running until a man can come over and take over, because the woman isn't supposed to teach. Okay? And they said, well, you know, we just don't, this, this scripture said you, you, you swear by the altar, but the rest of it doesn't mean anything. No, he's saying if, 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 the, if the altar is holy here, the altar is holy down there. It's still the same. Yes. Okay? If she can speak down there, and if she can go overseas and speak, it's okay. Yeah. Do you see mm -hmm. how we kind of just yeah. scramble all the everything in? Mm -hmm. okay? yeah. My Bible says there's neither male nor female. Mm -hmm. okay? mm -hmm. That's in the epistles. Yep. Okay? Hallelujah. Um, Thank you. I didn't mean to say that this morning, but that was not part of it, but just. Just came up. It was a freebie. It's a freebie. Yeah. That's a freebie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Verse 23. Woe unto you, scribes.
scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, you pay tithes of mint and anise and cumin and, of, and have omitted the weightier matters of the law, judgment, mercy, and faith. These ought to you have done, but not, not to have left the others undone. So they were just simply saying they, they, they were tithing on, on every little piece of, 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 of food that would come in. They would tithe and, and separate all the little grains, and they were just, just so minute about it. But says, but then they omitted the weightier matters of the law, okay? Mm -hmm. and, and that was uh, judgment, mercy, and faith. They left those out. Hallelujah. They left those things out. Yes. And now he's saying, he is saying, woe unto them. Why? Because these are the religious leaders. Okay? He is talking to religious leaders. Thank God we're not religious. Okay? We're supposed to be spiritual. Hallelujah. Okay? Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, for you make the clean the outside of the cup and the potter, but within they are full of extortion and excuses, excess. So you, you, you can walk, you never, you know, you, I don't know about you, but sometimes you have to wash dishes by hand, okay? Mm -hmm. And so you wash dishes by hand. And you get, you know, just put it up in the cupboard, and a couple of days later you go in there and you get it up, you get ready to fix yourself a coffee, and you look in there, oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. The outside's pretty good. <laughs> you wouldn't want to drink what's on the inside yet. Because I washed the outside. I washed the outside. But see, it didn't do anything about the inside. That's what Jesus is talking yeah. about. He's saying, you, you, you take care of the outside. You make the outside look so good, but it's the inside that I'm looking at. Amen. It's the inside. Okay? So you may clean the outside of the cup and the platter, but within are full of extortion and excess. Now blind Pharisees cleanse first that which is within the cup and platter, then the outside may be clean also. What once you scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you are like unto quieted sepulchres, which indeed appear beautiful outward, but within are full of dead man's bones and all uncleanliness. I was, had a funeral to do Saturday. It was a Friday. Friday. And uh, we ended up at the, the gravesite. And uh, I had to go by a lot of tombstones and step over them. And some of them are very ornate, they're very beautiful on the outside, mm -hmm. but it's on the inside. Mm -hmm. He said, Jesus said, you, you, you whitewash everything, you make it look so nice and so pretty, and, and it gives the appearance of something just, just, it's just so awesome. He said, but really in reality, once you open up the, you open up, dig down a little bit. Everybody say dig down a little bit. Dig, dig down. down. Dig down a little bit. It says it's full of, full of corruption and dead man's bones. Why? Mm -hmm. Because that's really sometimes it's the inside. You see, see, we, we work at the outside, endeavoring to 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 make that look good, okay? Make it look like give the appearance of, that we're, we're we're doing good, but it, it's the inside yes. that matters. Amen. Okay? It's the inside that matters. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Psalms 139, who has put up verses, we'll do verses 1, 2, maybe 3. Psalms 139. Such an awesome scripture. The whole chapter is just amazing. Mm -hmm. Psalms 139, verse 1. O oh Lord, thou hast searched me and has known me. So God, what, does God search the outside or the inside? inside. God searches the inside. Okay, verse 2. Thou knowest my sitting downs and my uprising. So God knows when you sit down. He, God knows when you, when you get up. He knows when you go to sleep at night. And he knows when you wake up in the morning. Thou understands my thoughts. About, ooh, 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 ooh. Wow. Wow. When I think of Billy Graham, I think of a man that is a, a holy man of God. Yes. I do. I do. I think of, I mean, if I'm looking for an example of, of godliness and holiness, I, 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 I like, I think of Billy Graham because that's where I got saved. It's just listening to him. And yet he would say, he said, you have no idea what ungodly thoughts go through my mind. Yeah, I heard that. He said, you have no idea 
the foul things that come through my mind. Mm. He says, but I've learned that those aren't my thoughts. Yeah. And those aren't my thoughts. Mm. I realize that. Mm -hmm. And so when, when you begin to, to realize that, then, then, you know, sometimes I think, well, I must be a terrible person. Well, you know, the devil likes to put thoughts in there, too. Mm -hmm. He does. Hey, we can cast down thoughts, cast down imagination. Yes, we can. Right? Yep. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So we find, you know, what about verse 3? Thank you, Lord. Thou compassest my path, my lying down, and thou art acquainted with all my ways. All of my ways. God knows. God knows. I remember there was a, a minister a number of years ago that uh, he was, everybody was flooding down to, to get the impartation at, at these meetings down in Florida. And I remember I was at Malagas with Pastor Hooper and some other people and, and some other ministers. I, 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 very well, very well acquainted with and have ministered in their churches and they said, well, we're, we're going down and we're going to get in on the impartation. And a lot of people were doing that. People were talking about going down and just getting the car a little too, driving all the way down the floor, just get in what God was doing down there. Get in on it, get in on God's moving, God's moving. I remember Pastor Hooper, he said something. He said, I don't know if I would do that, guys. You might want to hold off a little bit. You just might want to hold off a little bit. Nope, nope, nope. We're going down. We're going to get what that man's got. <laughs> but somebody preaches from the pulpit, and what they live after they leave the pulpit can be two different worlds. Because mm -hmm. they found out that he was in the middle, even the middle of this revival he was having, that he was having a torrid affair with another woman. He's married to one woman, and he's having an affair with another woman. Well, we're going to go down and get what he's got. I don't know if you want that, but he's got. Okay. See, God exposes. God exposes. Okay. Well, he, he, he knows every thought. He knows every thought. Are there times that you can go places and get an impart? Absolutely. Absolutely. But then again, you know, just want to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Yes, amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. I remember you got time for, for a story. All day. Uh, there was a lady that, that I knew. And uh, she, was a, she was a very spiritual lady. And uh, uh, she had came to church for a number of years and uh, spent a lot of time in prayer and, and reading her Bible. Really, I mean, could quote whole chapters of the Bible at, at times. And uh, I remember one day, uh, her son contacted me. He, he lived quite a ways away, and and he said, "I'm concerned for my mother." And I said, "Why?" Well, I'm concerned my mom's going to go to hell. And I said, "Okay, what makes you think she's going to go to hell? She wears pants. Mm -hmm. really? My mom wears pants. She's going to hell." Mm -hmm. And I said, "Really?" I said, "Well, she, you know, she's a very spiritual being." He said, "My mom's going to hell." Mm -hmm. And so, that's where he was coming from. And I tried to talk to him a little bit about God's grace and this, and, and this that I, I already read that, so I don't know. Okay. And so, in the fullness of time, she passed away, and, and we did the funeral. And uh, I happened to run into him uh, sometime later, and he was upset about his mom going to hell. And I said, Ram didn't go to hell. He said, well, I said, I, I wish you did. I said, well, on her deathbed, we took communion. And she confessed, asked God to forgive her of any and all sin. Oh, well, that was so good. Now she, you know, she went to hell. Now he's all happy she went to hell. It's not the outward. See, religion makes everything outward. We had this lady. You got time for a story? Yes. yes. And I've cared about her before. And and uh, she, I, I wish, I, I, I don't know she's, she's in heaven right now. 
I wish we could have brought her here for you. She was short. She was round. <laughs> okay. She she was a, a, a Mennonite lady, and she had this little white, I don't know what they call it, little white thing she wore all the time. I always yeah. saw her. She had the fruit of the Spirit like nobody else I ever, yeah. ever met. Oh, I mean, you, you, all you wanted to do was just, you just, you wanted, to, you didn't want to let her go, you wanted to take her home with you. And she just oozed the presence of God. She oozed everything. Why? It was what was on the inside of her. Inside. Good word. That made her so beautiful. And she just, you were drawn to her. It wasn't because she was short or, or, or round and rotund or anything. It was the mm -hmm. spirit that was on the inside. Yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. God. And you know what? She didn't even speak in tongues. And she said, I, 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 she said, I, Pastor, I want it so bad. I really want to speak. But I want my husband, Walter, to get it first. And then if he gets it first, and then I'm going to be right there. Because I believe that. I know it's for Walter as far as I know. He never said to get it. She just, it was the love that she had, the fruit of the Spirit, so incredible, so, ah, because it was what came out, every time she did, whatever came out of her, how many remember George Moss? Yeah, yeah several of you, he's, he's had a, a major stroke, I was in front yesterday, and I don't any, know any more about it, but when he was here, uh, he was a, a, a minister that came and ministered for us a number of times. And uh, you, say, you remember George Moss, don't you? Amazing man. And the, the love that was just oozed from that man. Yes. God told him, he says, I, I'm going to let my love just, just pour right through you to every, everyone that's anywhere close to you. And oh my goodness, uh, it just, and he laughed all the time. He was laughing all the time. I remember he said, I don't like George. I said, what? What's wrong with George? He said, I don't like how he laughs. There's something wrong with somebody when they laugh like that all the time. And now he just had the joy of the Lord. Yeah, amen. Oh. I like George. He was, he was such an awesome man. But just, what's on the inside? Okay? Amen. What's on the inside of us that God looks at? It's always, about, it's always been about the heart. Always been about the heart. Okay? Yes. And that's what God is looking at. And that's just that, that's not all about holiness. You know, there's a there's a lot more. They have to go in a little bit deeper with it. First Peter one that says be ye holy and I don't know. When do, do we have any holy people here today? Yeah. Yes. Anybody? I mean you you say I'm holy. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> Are you sure you're holy? Yes. Well, what, what makes you holy? Jesus. Jesus. Well, yeah. It's just God that makes us holy. And as, as that holiness it, it gets into us, it begins to change us. It begins to change us from the inside. As it changes us from the inside, it works its way out. Yes. Amen. Amen. You can't change the outside and it goes in. From starts in the inside, not Christ in you, the hope of glory. Amen. And so this 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 God that's on the inside, the Bible says, no, you're not, you are the temple of the Holy Ghost. Yes. So we've got the Holy One on the inside of us. And then God says, be holy. Well, I guess it's, I guess there's room for that. Okay? And so uh, we we can be holy. Yes. Okay? God wants us to be. He's given us everything we need to be holy. But it really, it just starts in the heart. Amen. Mm -hmm. Say, say, listen to me, I want to be like God. Oh. Yes. Is God holy? Yes. yes. God is holy. Yes. And we can be just like him too. Amen? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, the Lord is good. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord, we are giving thanks today. Mm. Thank you for your word. Yes, Lord. It blesses us. Your word sets us free. Yes, Lord. Your word is true. Amen? Amen. If you're here today and... and uh, we have people watching by the live stream, and so if you're, if you've never made Jesus your Lord, I know everybody here this morning can say that. But if, but if you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, we encourage you to pray and ask Him to come into your heart. Yes. It's not about religion. It, it's not about you know joining church. 
It's about who, who comes into your heart. For as many as re- receive them, for them may be power to become the children of God, the sons of God. And so you ask them into your heart. And you just simply say, Lord, I ask you to forgive me of my sins. I invite you into my heart. Cleanse me by your blood. And I am righteous. And you've made me holy. And I will live for you and serve you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name. If you said that, you said that. You, you, you can know that you're on your way to heaven. Find a good church to go to and serve the Lord that way. Amen? Amen. If anybody needs prayer, we would love to pray with you. What's tonight? Holy oh, Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. What does that mean? Anything can happen. Anything can happen. Hallelujah. God bless.